Now I would like to move on to Muhammad's life in Mecca and in Muslim biographies. It mentions that he was a prophet for 22 years, where the non-Muslim sources seem to say something different. Let's have a look at them. Here, I'm going to show an image, is a 10th century copy of the fragment of the charts of Jacob of Edessa, written in 692. And here is that, just so everybody has a look. Um, in this one in particular, it says uh, the reign was seven years. And the next one here I have is uh, a chronicle in 705 AD. And this one is talking about the caliphs and whatnot. So he reigned seven years again. Here's another. And then this one is a chronicle from 724 AD, where it says that uh, Muhammad lived another 10 years. Um, this is also another one in particular. It's chronicle from 775 AD. Muhammad, 10 years. So this is uh, about the account of generations, races, and years from Adam down to the present day, written in AD 775. And then uh, here is the Zuknin. I hope I'm saying this correctly, chronicle that was written in 775 AD, just so people could see this manuscript. And then the translation right here where it mentions the name Muhammad. Then down below, you see it highlighted where it says, so he governed them for seven years. Um, that was that. Also, we have the Di uh, from Dionysus of Telmahur, or I'm saying that right, or Mar. And this is talking about... Um, Patriarch from eighty six eighteen to six or sorry eight eighteen to eight forty five. This is um, talking about Muhammad, king of the Arabs, who died um, after reigning for ten years. So you kind of have this like seven and ten year thing going on. So there's people, or now people are leaders of nations and not the land. Uh, anyway, let's let's first stop right there. Do you have anything you'd like to say about all these sources that I just brought up? Is this is this could they just be well, copying off of each other, or is there something to it? So they will to some extent, yeah. There's a couple of interesting things, though. So one is the obviously period. I mean, ten years. Obviously, you could say they're just simply um, slightly misrepresenting what he is. At the, this is Muhammad's time at Mecca, Medina, six twenty two to six thirty two. Ten years. Okay, that seems to fit quite well. But the interesting thing, of course, they say he's reigning, not that he's a prophet, but that he's reigning. He's a king. As always with the non-Muslim sources, and especially when they're talking about Muhammad's lifetime, which they wouldn't have had real access to, because a prophet's never anything in their own lifetime, really. It tends to be afterwards. And it's just like Jesus, plenty of wandering holy men at the time, you know, so... The, and he, he gradually, you know, becomes you know, such an amazing, huge figure afterwards, really. Um, and this, so the same for Muhammad. So the question you always have to ask, is, what do they know? What makes them think he's a king? Is it because that's... Have they... So he seems to lead the beginning of the conquest anyway, Muhammad, in Muslim sources. So that sounds like something secular leader would do. So they make him a king because that's what you might expect. They might decide not to make him a prophet because they don't want to accord him prophetic statement and status. The Christian sources, they don't want to acknowledge. Later ones say he's a false prophet. Okay, they know that Muslims say he's a prophet, but Muslims say he's a false prophet. So, but always, it's... We would like to know why do they say this? Is, are they able to tap into any real information or is it just their particular perspective and their way of reconstructing what's going on? So, for example, those a number of Christians that are more positive towards Islam, so those that are more negative will say Muhammad is a false prophet. But those that are more positive will say, well, Muhammad, he's a prophet, but he doesn't know the whole story. He only knows about there being one God. And that's, you know, he's a not very high level prophet. And God thought, well, the Arabs aren't, you know, they're too um, barbaric to be able to understand the mysteries of the Trinity. So we'll just tell them about the one God. So they make Muhammad into a you know, low level prophet who just knows that, who doesn't know the real diff difficult things about the Trinity. And so that's their way of reconstructing things just to help them understand the world and still be able to preserve the fact that they, the Christians, are 
still superior because they were the real mysteries of the Trinity. So we would say, well, that's obviously false. That's a clear explanation right. to preserve Christian you know, positive feelings about themselves. So the, the question is, when they say Muhammad's a king, what are they doing there? Is that also just a way of um, preserving their own way of you know, thinking of the world, that they have the only true and spiritual leader in Jesus, and Muhammad, well, he's only secular, he's a king. Or do they know something? And that, that's what's really difficult for us to sort out. The 710 is a, a rather fascinating, something I, got, I remember getting very hooked on during my PhD. There is a very strange three-year discrepancy in dating the various events early Islam. So, for example, some Christian sources say that Muhammad started his work in 930, the year 930 after Alexander the Great, which was a, a way of counting that they used in a number of Christian communities in the Middle East, or 933, so that's, that would be 619 or 622. And there's just hundreds of it's, it's really odd. And I, I kind of, for a while, I kind of started trying to collect everything to try and find out what lay behind it, but it's really difficult to know. <laughs> 